Sosteniamo le donne e gli uomini impegnati nello sviluppo delle imprese e delle attività professionali per affrontare le sfide imprenditoriali, sociali e culturali del nostro tempo, contribuendo al bene comune. Compagnia delle opere, un criterio ideale, un'amicizia operativa. Sosteniamo le donne e gli uomini impegnati nello sviluppo delle imprese e delle attività professionali per affrontare le sfide imprenditoriali, sociali e culturali del nostro tempo, contribuendo al bene comune. Compagnia delle opere, un criterio ideale, un'amicizia operativa. Sosteniamo le donne e gli uomini impegnati nello sviluppo delle imprese e delle attività professionali per affrontare le sfide imprenditoriali, sociali e culturali del nostro tempo, contribuendo al bene comune. Compagnia delle opere, un criterio ideale, un'amicizia operativa. dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà, lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Buonasera, eh, buonasera, benvenuti a questo incontro della... Good evening and welcome uh, to this uh, uh, session. Uh, the title here is A Decent Job for a Good Life. This title aims to describe uh, something that we are all convinced of. Uh, at least uh, all the people here involved in this panel. But it's also a sort of provocation because, you know, this is something that uh, is not to be taken for granted nowadays. As Pope Francis uh, has underlined since the beginning, um, um, It is important that a job is decent, but again, it is not something to be taken for granted. And uh, we wanted to add to this, uh, uh, to these words uh, of uh, Pope Francis, something more and uh, something about the fact of having a good life, because we are convinced that uh, work can improve people's lives, uh, and that everyone deserves. Uh, to have the right uh, to a good life. Even when uh, someone may think that uh, people have no chance to live a good life, and I'm referring mainly to the situation of disabled people. Um, well, the problems related to disabled people haven't been solved yet, uh, but there are successful stories showing that uh, uh, a job can help uh, um, even the most vulnerable people um, and uh, give them a good life or a, at least a hope of a good life. And we have seen many cases testifying this. Um, 
I am uh, the uh, president of CDO Opere Sociali. It is uh, a sort of association of uh, organizations working for uh, disabled people, the most vulnerable people. And uh, last year, we have talked about uh, uh, inclusion at work. And we are going to deal with that topic uh, uh, again with some of our, our guests. And uh, Professor Tiraboski was also involved last year, and so we decided to keep on with these meetings. First of all, with uh, a roundtable involving the associations that are active in this uh, domain. And uh, we wanted Rimini's meeting to be uh, an exceptional um, place, a uh, wonderful place for uh, this kind of uh, reflection. I would like to thank all the people who will help us dealing with uh, this topic, addressing this topic. And I've already mentioned Professor Tiraboski. And I haven't mentioned the only lady who is with us uh, because um, there is one reason why I mentioned Professor Tiraboski, because cooperation and social inclusion uh, of uh, disabled people um, were one of the main, uh, let's say, working fields of Marco Biaggi. Um, this year is the anniversary of uh, his murder by the uh, Brigate Rosse, the Red Brigade. And uh, uh, Marco Biaggi was uh, also the professor of Michele Tiraboschi. Michele Tiraboschi was uh, one of his students. And uh, um, he is now a professor of uh, labor law. But he is also the inventor of ADAPT that at the moment is the main core, uh, the main center studying the uh, world of labor. And so Michele Tiraboschi will uh, help us uh, in this panel. Then Eleonora Vanni, social cooperator. She started as a social cooperator. And she told me that uh, she started working in this uh, field, starting from uh, the world of arts, because she studied arts before uh, becoming a director in the social cooperative uh, uh, sector. And she is now the president of Lega Cop Sociali. So it's the first time for her here at the meeting. And so I would like to thank her very much for being here. Um, on her uh, left, uh, Stefano Granata, another social cooperator, president of Feder Solidarietà, that is uh, the Association of Social Cooperatives uh, belonging to Com Cooperative. Big round of applause. Thank you. The acronyms used uh, uh, are mainly related to the past because now uh, cooperation means uh, um, acting together, uh, being together, and uh, so uh, Eleonore Stefano will help us as representatives of the world of cooperation. Then there is another social cooperator, Enrico Novara. He worked for many years in the field of development because he's an engineer and he worked uh, in Brazil. Uh, for the urbanization of important favelas. Then he came back to Italy and um, for a few years now, he has been helping a um, social cooperative in Monza called Liride. And this cooperative uh, was founded by a group of families who had disabled children and wanted to ensure to, 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 to offer them um, uh, greater opportunities in their lives. Uh, Enrico has contributed uh, a lot to the development of this cooperative, and we will ask him 
um, to talk about his experience uh, and uh, about some other ideas uh, uh, on the topic. Last but not least, Alejandro Marius. Uh, he comes from Venezuela. That's a difficult country where there is no employment and where poverty is maybe the main characteristic. But Alejandro today is going to tell us something about uh, the opportunity to work, to offer a decent job for a good life, even in such a difficult place. So I would like to ask, uh, uh, I would like to start uh, with a video um, from Venezuela about uh, the inclusion of uh, uh, young people young disabled people and their inclusion. So let's start with the video and then we will ask Alejandro to talk about his experience. Thank you, everyone. Hello, how are you? My name is uh, uh, Vital Manzanilla. I'm 36 years old. Work for me means uh, responsibility, independent, and still a lot of responsibility. I usually clean uh, corridors, stairs, rooms. I also work as a sort of messenger so sometimes, doing favors for my bosses, ask for things. My name is uh, Yorbelis Altuve. I'm uh, 31 years old and uh, I work at uh, the Emira Lobel School and I've been working here for four years. I sweep, clean the walls, the floors, water the plants, uh, clean the tables. Um, and. I like uh, studying, reading, writing under dictation. Professor Lila is an angel that God uh, placed, let's say, in our path. She offered me great support, and thanks to her, my dream has come true. My name is Lila Moncada. I am a special education teacher. I have 30 years of experience. And I really enjoy working with uh, special adults. The project we have developed with uh, Trabajo y Persona, um, well, it's a project that we have been working within, uh, training young people and helping them to strengthen their uh, education and including them uh, in the world of work. For me, it is very beneficial to work with them because I feel that I receive more from them than I than they receive from me. I uh, have the Down syndrome, and uh, um, this has become my life. And uh, I've written a book on that, and I loved writing the book because I was an example. It could be an example for all children with disability. The book is called The Life of uh, Neptali. And it was published on Amazon, PayPal, and uh, I dream of publishing it uh, uh, in physical form. And I would like to have friends from other countries and learn about other cultures, because you learn from all the people who are different. Because we are all different. There are no people here with uh, special situations and other with uh, conventional situations. We are all different because we are human beings and we need to feel busy and be independent. And why not give the opportunity to all people who deserve it? All the people who have supported me and been in contact with me, well, I would like to thank them. So I would like to say thank you very much for everything. Thank you. I will be forever grateful. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano, and thanks to the meeting. Thanks to all of you for being here, taking part in this meeting. Well, this is just the initial experience for us. As Lila, the teacher, said, and as Natalie said, we are learning, learning how to deal with 
uh, a special reality. In Venezuela, we call them special people, and we are all special. Trabajo y Persona has been offering opportunities for uh, 13 years, especially to young women, for them to learn uh, a job and maybe start a business, um, especially micro businesses like uh, cocoa producers, uh, chocolate uh, carpenters, m mechanics, um, hairdressers, different uh, jobs and professions. And we've learned a lot uh, in these years in a country where it's very difficult to find a job if you are a person that uh, uh, is apparently normal because it has a great friend uh, said, we all have a special condition. Uh, it's only hidden. And uh, so you can imagine how difficult it can be for these special people. They have no opportunities. In Venezuela, there is a law providing for uh, support for uh, people with uh, disabilities, some, you know, uh, physical or cognitive disabilities. And uh, so they receive support for 21 years. And after these 21 years, they are on their own. They have no opportunities. And there is a law, but it's only on paper. Uh, saying that uh, a percentage of workers should be made up of uh, uh, special people as they are, but it's uh, only formal. So it's very difficult for them to find a job. And um, we asked ourselves this question, considering uh, the situation of Leela, who had already retired but wanted to keep on working with these uh, people. Um, and. Uh, I think of Neptali, Neptali who wanted to tell uh, his story to uh, everyone in the world. If you go on Amazon, you will find the story of his life. He wanted to write his biography uh, because uh, he wanted people to know how he found a job. It might seem banal, uh, something that everyone takes for granted. And when we found a job, everyone uh, thought uh, that it was the right thing. Whereas for him, starting cleaning, doing the cleaning in this uh, school uh, was something that totally and radically changed his life. So we should never stop in front of difficulties, in front of troubles. But do we need to ask permission for starting work, working? Do we need uh, a permission for uh, you know, involving companies, cooperatives, not-for-profit organizations, uh, for them to work together? No, we don't need any permission. We don't need any specific law. I think that laws only come after and can document the experiences. Uh, in our case, it was like that. So we want to keep on learning from all those who are involved in this field to make our work grow so that uh, the story of Neptali can be known worldwide uh, and so that we can uh, reach out to more people, more young people, more women. As Stefano said, work means having a relationship with our reality, express what we are and who we are, our talent, working with other people, being men and women, producing services for others, and so enhance, in a way, the common good. A jobless person is a person who is condemned. It is a person that is condemned to be disadvantaged, to, um, well, not achieving happiness. And so I think we all agree on this, on the fact that we need to commit ourselves to uh, ensure that everyone uh, can learn a job and find a job. It doesn't mean what kind of job. This meeting is an example of people who are like paying for 
working for free, the volunteers. And uh, volunteering, working for free, is an example that I really hold dear and that I have in my heart. We don't, we, we mustn't um, leave aside any opportunities. And when we feel tired, uh, we feel tired because um, there are difficulties, the crisis is difficult, because, but I will always find someone, a friend, uh, to help me. Think of the uh, United Nations uh, um, Development Goals uh, that say that no one should be left behind. And I agree with that. We need to fight against poverty, but believe me, it's much better to leave a person on their own, alone, because this is much worse than just being be left behind, uh, lagging behind, uh, because loneliness can be a terrible, terrible disease, a terrible condition. And in order to work, we need to think of ourselves like this. Uh, social cooperatives, schools, universities. When we are faced with all these challenges uh, of people who have uh, disabilities or also uh, people who do not know um, a specific job, well, if what I saw uh, with the uh, women and men that we have been training in these years, I think that this cooperation, this uh, working together is the only way that we have uh, to achieve great results. Thank you, Alejandro. I think that uh, the beginning was very interesting. And I think that uh, the idea that uh, uh, working uh, a job means opportunity um, uh, is core and it is something that uh, we haven't uh, underlined uh, enough so far. Now, Enrico Novara, good evening. The, the first thing that I think of when I have to talk about fragility is normality. Normality because on the one hand, we are all fragile. On the other hand, I was really impressed in my professional experience when I met about 20 years ago here at the meeting, I met the Permanent Observatory of the Holy See, Mr. Martin, um, and he, I, he asked me, who's the poor in your opinion? And I asked him, and he said, the poor is the person that cannot use the talents that God has given him or her in the way the gods would like. And this is, in my opinion, a practical definition that tells you how to deal with a fragility that uh, is uh, normal because you don't have to look at fragility as a lack of something, the lack of money, the lack of assistance, the lack of strength to face uh, complex situations. But as uh, work that you do to engage, to participate, and this is a fundamental point, in my opinion. That's why I'm so happy to see Alejandro here with us. We've known each other for a long time. And it's nice to, to see that in, that in a situation like uh, that of Venezuela, where there's no employment, uh, there is uh, the concern um, and the desire to have everyone work. So if you talk about fragility, you have to deal with an issue that is normal to everyone. So poverty or fragility is something that touches us directly because we can see it, touch it. 
Um, in the past, I used to take to give courses on the urbanization of uh, poor areas to engineers, sociologists, and so on. And I used this sentence that I just said as an introduction. And I remember an architect once told me, I, I don't agree. And I said, why? Uh, because if what you say is true, then I could be poor. And I don't like that. So we live in an environment where our situation is a situation of fragility. This is a starting point, in my opinion. So we're talking about something that is normal. And I would like to go a bit more into depth when it comes to this. Using my job experience, I worked as an employer in a way. I've almost always been the manager of projects or associations. And so I'm always, I'm, I've always been an employer. And in the last few years, dealing with this uh, cooperative in Monza that's called Iride, and that this year celebrates its 40th anniversary, working on the issue of disability. This is a cooperative that uh, uh, offers residential solutions uh, and educational uh, courses, as well as uh, work opportunities. So dealing with this um, cooperative, I started wondering what it means to offer a job. Is there a difference between offering a job and starting a job? Because the definition of poverty, well, a poor person is a person that cannot put into practice the talents that God gave this person in the way that God would like. So you need to do something for that talent to start working and being used. And that is something different, different from uh, some, from offering a job. So for an employer like myself, what does it mean to put to work? We do not provide catering services, cleaning services. We uh, manufacture products uh, for the electromechanic uh, sector, so manufacturing sector which is uh, pretty strong in the Brianza area. So we don't have many relations, uh, but uh, the passion for work that our operators, about 40 of them, 30 of them are disabled people. Uh, the passion that they feel is the same passion for work that you saw in the video, in the two young people in the video. Uh, a job that is simple but fills my life, one of them said. And this is something that we can perceive in their comments. We cannot think of separating uh, a job from its meaning because uh, the human being, in order to reach harmony, um, needs to be committed uh, until he or she is consumed by it. It's a, it's a call that we have, a calling. Of course, uh, we could spend hours talking about this about welfareism and development, um, about the fact that even those who cannot work need work. And our cooperative uh, offers uh, paths that allow the person to face what uh, the challenges that life uh, provides. Because regardless of what happens, uh, this we need uh, to face life. We need to provide an answer to what 
life is asking of us. This is the real job. And this leads us to another issue. There is a job also for those who do not work. And the work that we do is just part of our search activity for our destiny. So to work, working is part of the need that the person feels. The, op the job opportunity, so giving a person the opportunity to work uh, a decent kind of work means uh, recognizing the potential of that person so, the, so that that person can start working and help uh, build and create a place where these conditions will remain unchanged, where someone can experience the meaning of work. This is, in my opinion, the work of an employer like myself that provides opportunity, work opportunities, opportunities for a decent job. Now, I would like to make an example, another example. Again, talking about uh, what is normal. Among the different projects that I uh, deal with, I manage a company that does industrial automation activities. In the last few years, it's been very difficult to keep with us um, a computer engineer um, because uh, we hire them and then they leave. And when they leave, the, the last one that left, I said, what did you learn here? And he told me, I, I learned to work. So in a company like uh, this small company that identifies the problem, thinks of a solution, uh, carries out the project, it does uh, um, customer service afterwards, this person that is a great uh, computer engineer had learned to work. So when we hired the new person, when we interviewed that person, we asked that person, would you like to learn how to work in a company performing this role, this job? So we asked the person to uh, accept to look for what the person is looking for in a job. So as I said, we are a small cooperative. We work in the electromechanics sector. And this means, uh, first of all, attention to the customer, the product, but more than the product, the environment the customer lives in. So for us, producing doesn't simply mean produce a good item, but understanding the storage techniques, how to handle the products, how to do uh, customer service after sales service. So create a relationship with the customer to understand, better understand what we have to do. So we kind of, after that, we disassemble the process, we disassemble the pieces, and we recreate uh, the manufacturing process depending on the potential that we have and based on the talents that we have at our disposal. It may seem something commonplace, but in this way, we've been able to employ uh, people affected by autism uh, working on uh, machines. This way, you can use uh, um, the skills that people have. Um, I was not familiar with uh, Marco Biaggi because I was elsewhere at that time. But I think that what he uh, envisaged was very effective. We are trying to create hybrid production uh, processes. We mainly work with uh, multinational companies with uh, also headquarters in our its, uh, country. And of course, everything is far 
more evolved than it is normally. So it is easy to talk about them on how to reassemble processes. This basically means finding the right conditions to uh, let people work. Generally, uh, the, the question is how to continue to create these opportunities so that uh, job placement is not something that you do to fulfill an obligation. Obviously, it is essential to try and do it as it is essential to provide assistance. But if you just uh, fulfill an obligation, this will not result in the experience that we saw in uh, the video that Alejandro shared with us, because those are experiences of meaning. And that does not come from a law. The, the cooperation law in Italy was passed 10 years after social cooperatives were created. So 10 years after, more or less, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Mid-70s, uh, disabled people could go to uh, standard schools. Then they, after a few years, they left, and then we had to work on it. So it's important to identify the processes that uh, are suitable for people to work in. And the customer asked us to review their internal processes following the processes that we had already implemented for their products. And this is the real challenge. You deal with what you have in front of you with a passion for the people that uh, you have with you. Grazie, grazie Enrico per il tuo contributo. Thank you, Enrico. I think you gave us a lot of food for thought, um, much more than just the issue of the inclusion of people with disability, because uh, your um, idea of the meaning of work is very important. Right now, we are particularly concerned by the fact that the idea of work being meaningful per se is not something that we should take for granted. This is something that will have is a task that we will have to um, work on. Now, the floor to. Eleonora and Stefano, I don't know who's going to speak first. Stefano, okay. What are you going to share with us? What is your opinion? Well, first of all, um, it's nice to see all of you here. The experience that you, you just heard about it's not so uh, uh, well, let's say that in Italy we are working very hard in this direction. Uh, I represent Conf Cooperative. We're talking about cooperatives that deal with uh, job placement of people in a uh, uh, situation of fragility, people who uh, we are talking about tw almost 25,000 people all over Italy. So we're talking about a large company. And uh, these people are placed in companies. That means that it works. I would like to mention two points that right now we will have to deal with. The first one is cultural because we have this wealth in our country, but we're not aware of it. And the political world is not aware of it. Sometimes it even uh, works against it. Just think of all the benefits 
that either are not present or are not imp are present but not implemented. And the situation right now is extremely uh, weird because we're talking about people that from an economic point of view, if they had to be assisted by the reference community, are mainly a cost. Just think of the cost of assistance. Uh, and I'm not talking about disability. Talk about uh, uh, convicts, for example, or other forms of uh, disability. This is a cost for the community, and the community has to provide uh, uh, recreational or assistance uh, services. But if you place uh, people in a job, you reduce costs for the community and you generate wealth. So you go uh, in the completely opposite direction. And so it's really uh, inexplicable why we're not moving in this direction more quickly. There's another point that we deem as very important and the reason why job placement is so important in our area. And that is that our main aim is not to assist people, but to enable them, to enable them to live fully within a community because having access to a job is already a challenge. But learning to work is a second kind of qualification because if you work, that gives you a qualification, a social qualification, as well as an economic one. In such a complex labor wor world, because also the labor world is liquid right now, uh, you need a set of qualifications that go beyond the technical ones, so social qualifications. And then you are able to become independent, and so there's the issue of freedom. Disability. Uh, well, if you have a job, you are independent. Uh, if you don't have a job, you will never be able to uh, rent a flat. And so someone will always have to assist you. So you understand that job placement triggers a series of passages that place the person in a situation of independence. This person becomes the protagonist of his or her life because this person doesn't just receive, but can also give in a relation with the others. Obviously, in order to do that, in order to do all of this, we need a set of requirements and things are becoming more and more complex nowadays. First of all, and I'm saying this also to the world of social cooperation, as you heard before from Enrico. We need more companies. Now social cooperatives must become more um, enterprises than in the past. In the past, we had families that did not know what to do with their uh, uh, sons and daughter. I don't want to keep my son and or my daughter in the house all the time. So these cooperatives were created as a, to give an answer to all these requests from families. However, today, the real need is we need to create a, a sector, a process, as you would do within a company. Why does a company provide benefits to the community? Because it creates value. And in the field of social cooperation, what is the value that cooperatives create? Not just job placement, they generate wealth, a kind of wealth that can be totally redistributed to the community because in a social cooperative, there is no investor that needs to be paid off. There are no dividends to be paid because the aim is to create that kind of wealth so profits are more than welcome because then they are totally reinvested in activities to give opportunities to more people 
or to increase connections and production. This requires research, uh, development, investments. You need to invest also in the field of social cooperatives, otherwise you will not evolve. I would like I would like to tell you uh, something that I think uh, is very relevant in this case. I'm from Milan, and you know that car sharing in Italy started in Milan because it was uh, a city where this kind of need was felt. The social cooperative I belong to, Spazio Aperto, participated in a call for tender and won, won it, uh, satisfying the requirements of that uh, call for tender. Uh, that wanted uh, someone who could be present. We won the bid, won the call, and Mercedes did not analyze this in detail. After six months, they came and visited us and saw that this activity was working very well. They are Germans, of course, and so they want everything to work perfectly. It was the first car sharing in Italy, so it had to uh, work. Only after realizing that we were doing the job perfectly, they realized that we were a pack of people, former convicts, uh, uh, people with a psychic or cognitive disability, uh, managing this service that uh, was a service for the city for thousands of people. And this was very um, useful. It taught us very much. And we developed the same process in other cities. And Mercedes, when they uh, opened up in other countries uh, in Europe, in Spain, Madrid, and Barcelona, they put a clause saying that social cooperatives, social enterprises should participate. This means that it's very important today for these companies that there are also not just effective, of course, they have to be uh, effective, but also efficient. So they need to be able to satisfy the needs of the market with different methods because uh, with a cooperative like ours, uh, the situation is different than with a, another enterprise or, or business. And Mercedes actually uh, uh, got an advantage from that because they did the social responsibility campaign on it. And I'm saying this because today we need uh, businessmen. We need new managers, but we need entrepreneurs who use their passion for people uh, as a trigger for their action. Obviously, a company, in order to survive, needs to have profits. However, if you don't feel that kind of passion inside the social cooperative, uh, if you don't bear in mind that that person is the priority, and the priority is the creation of a social capital, th that company will not survive. And uh, now we need the new generations with skills and passion and the willingness to do something for their community. And this is a great opportunity. This morning, I was uh, watching the beginning of a panel where Vitadini was mentioning some figures that are really concerning two million young people are not studying and are not working and are not even interested in finding a job because they don't find a meaning. A uh, job has no meaning for their life. So in this case, we can play a fundamental role because the first experience that you have in life must be an experience that gives meaning to your life. So work is very important, but it has to be deeply rooted in a community so that you know that you don't work just for yourself. You work also for other people. 
and you are rewarded for it. Also economically, because of course it's important for me to be independent, for example, that my job is uh, rewarded. But it is essential that my choice is a choice that I can do, but that as a starting point, I need to have a search for meaning. So I really hope this generation will feel it as a vocation. So if I decide to be an entrepreneur, why not being a social entrepreneur? Because it will be these new social entrepreneurs who will be able to attract young people who are not studying, neither working right now. Because they will be able to tell them, uh, bet on my company, it's worth it. And there's also an educational purpose. There are no companies, or there are very, a very limited amount of companies in these positions. So social uh, enterprises need to rediscover their vocation so that all people can experience uh, this kind of meaningful relationship. Those who want to work and are ready to work, and those who refuse everything because it's coming from a company, a uh, society that seems to be rejecting this person just because this society, this community doesn't have the, langu the right language, doesn't speak the right language, cannot communicate with that person, with that young person. So we can tell these people that they can turn to social enterprises looking for a, a meaningful kind of work. This is very important. And I think that also in this place, we can realize how important these kind of enterprises are, not just for our economy, because we're not talking about assistance or, or social services. We're talking about uh, enterprises, so doing business. So social enterprises can be an opportunity for a new life. And so it is uh, a challenge, of course, but we could uh, invest on this. And we need uh, the new skills of these new generations. Thank you. Okay. Well, the point that you were making about the sense and the meaning um, is uh, crucial. And there's another thing that I wanted to underline that maybe Eleonora will also underline um, is, you know, this uh, decline of the social uh, value. We live in this period in which the individual seems to be something different from the community and to take care of oneself, one needs to get out of the community, whereas I think that you are telling a different story here, which is very fascinating. Eleonora, let's move on. Well, first of all, hi, everyone, and thank you for inviting me. As Stefano said, this is the first time for me at the um, meeting, and uh, it's a uh, very involving and interesting um, and engaging um, experience, talking about sense of community. Let me start from uh, what uh, Stefano was saying about, uh, you know, finding a, a job, uh, allowing people to find a job and uh, um, test ourselves as uh, social cooperators. Uh, when we work, we need to stop and reflect uh, and uh, think about uh, a decent job and dignity, dignity in work. Um, and 
I think that the meaning of dignity has changed. I don't know if it has evolved or not. But there are for sure uh, some contexts in which, uh, uh, you know, all jobs are decent. But there are some requirements and some conditions about the type of job, because on one hand, all jobs are decent, but I think that there are some jobs that we do not uh, um, always support or share. Think of uh, weapons manufacturers. And uh, there are other conditions that can make a job more or less decent. So my point here is, is the job of uh, picking tomatoes that migrants do uh, decent? Well, I think that picking tomatoes is a decent job, but the conditions in which uh, these migrants are forced, to, obliged to work are not only not decent, but they threaten human dignity and their dignity, the dignity of those people in particular. And so I think that uh, we should rethink the sense and the meaning uh, of the job that we have today. Um, and this is also aimed at uh, reaching out to those two million young people that we mentioned earlier, and who maybe find it difficult to combine their talent, their will, uh, with the most uh, communitarian side of uh, uh, work, uh, the social side of work. I feel that uh, the social meaning, the social sense of uh, work is uh, something that um, is a bit old-fashioned and dates back to 40 years ago when social cooperatives were born. And I think that we need to rethink it and uh, um, put it into practice in a different way. There is a cross-cutting problem in this country with uh, not only employment but with the dignity of employment, uh, and uh, this is also related to the economic side of uh, uh, jobs. Uh, we often talk about uh, people leaving the country, young people going away, but there are also young people who go away not for, um, I don't know, being researchers or astronauts, but for being waiters, because in those uh, countries, being a waiter is more decent, is a more decent job than here in Italy. And this is a problem. Social cooperation has suffered a lot uh, uh, for this reason, because uh, um, for a very long time, there has been an evolution of employment. And uh, the main idea was that uh, people in difficulty, the most disadvantaged and uh, vulnerable people, well, mm, that these people should be involved in less decent jobs, uh, um, let's say um, secondary or subsidiary jobs uh, compared to the jobs of normal people, so to say. So we need uh, to have a, a profound, a deep reflection to think about this. And this is something that we should question as social cooperatives and as uh, representatives, as uh, associations. As uh, Stefano was uh, saying, the person is at the core of our action, of our, of what we do. Job does not only give an answer to 
people's needs uh, uh, from an economic point of view. But it also allows person a person to express one's uh, talents, one's uh, abilities. As Stefano was saying, having a job also means to be independent, to have a house. Uh, so that that dignity uh, as a citizen, that uh, uh, also means uh, the self-determination of people. And uh, well, this concept is part of my personal education and family education. Uh, the, the idea of being independent, of self-determination uh, through work, through employment, because, um, you know, also in terms of time that we dedicate to work, uh, this is an important part of our life and we cannot waste so much time with something that is not decent and does not ensure uh, dignity for us. And I'm not saying this because I want to um, look at the cultural abstract side of it, but it, because it's something very tangible, very concrete. But we should promote and develop uh, uh, increasingly both the job opportunities for the most vulnerable people, if we think of social cooperation, for example, and we go beyond social inclusion, inclusion at work, and think of um, cooperatives that gave opportunities to women to re-enter the uh, world of uh, employment. And they re-gave uh, they, they gave back a, a, a meaning, a sense to these women, trying to, you know, give a sense to uh, even families that uh, uh, were about to collapse uh, for several reasons. This is why job is particularly important from a social point of view. We are uh, cooperatives that have a, a purpose that um, uh, has to do with job opportunities and goes beyond with relationships with the social, economic, and political environment. Uh, our country, as other uh, people have already said, uh, is quite uh, advanced uh, in terms of uh, inclusion at work. Very often, laws go hand in hand with a social and cultural uh, change that has happened in the society. And there have been um, opportunities. I don't know if we will have time to talk about it uh, more in depth, but some opportunities haven't been um, seized, haven't been uh, harnessed. And uh, the example that uh, Stefano gave uh, made me think also of uh, some social positive contamination that we have in our communities, because that's where we work. The people with whom we work are in that area. And think of some small communities where we are the only point of reference, uh, both for uh, economical reasons uh, and for um, employment. So we play this role and uh, there is this contamination with the profit world because we need a culture of work that uh, uh, does not consider meritocracy uh, in a cruel way saying that, well, if you don't have a job, it's because you don't deserve it because sometimes there are no, there are, well, the conditions, let's say, are not met for finding a job. It's not just a matter of guilt. Uh, I don't want to put uh, the blame uh, on uh, young people for not having a job because it's up to us to think of the world of work in a different way. The world of work has evolved uh, and uh, young people are looking for something different.
maybe young people in the past uh, went to work and then uh, when they finished work they found they, they looked for some fulfilling activities whereas now young people look for fulfilling jobs where they can use and harness their talent and i think that uh, this uh, requires us to make an important reflection an important reflection that we uh, should deal with and that has to do with social businesses, social um, cooperatives, but also um, profit uh, or for profit businesses. Because at the end of the day, we are all um, asked to have some uh, margins and not uh, losses and reinvest, uh, in our case, our profits uh, in the society. I think this is the right moment to reflect, to um, to look at the cooperatives uh, and uh, see them uh, value the fact of giving job opportunities and uh, social competitors that have evolved uh, over time and that are now facing further changes. Some of them manage to change, whereas others are struggling. And I think that uh, this is one of the primary roles uh, of uh, um, organizations that uh, represent this sector because they have to help support companies in getting closer to a modern world of uh, work, um, which is something that we struggle to do in our country. So I think that uh, Mm, talking about this topic uh, and talking about uh, the most vulnerable people, people with disability, because, you know, actually, we are all vulnerable. We are all fragile. Young people are fragile. Young women are fragile. And uh, these fragilities can really uh, interest all of us at some point in our life. Well, I think that this is an important point, a fundamental point. point. Again, dignity at work, dignity, a decent job. And uh, let me conclude by saying that uh, uh, the value of it doesn't come from the meaning we attribute to it, but from what the community recognizes. Uh, and it is uh, a cultural and economic recognition. Because, you know, um, if uh, young people do not receive a decent pay, well, they cannot put up a family, they cannot have children. And so um, we will be faced with uh, um, another problem that is finding young people who are willing to, uh, to, to work uh, also because their work is not rewarded. And we cannot put all the blame on them because most of what happens depends on the culture of work uh, that we have all contributed to creating. Thank you. Thank you, Eleonora Vanni. Now, I would like to go back to this topic because the human being is always in a relationship with its, his or her environment. People are not islands. There's a world around us, and we live in it. Uh, we create relationships. So you need to find a place for yourself. So going back to something that you said before, and that really touched me, because three years ago in Cagliari, we heard uh, a man who lost his wife while she was collecting, harvesting tomatoes because of poisoning, I think. And he never um, dismissed the value 
that this wife uh, um, had connected to work, but he said we need to rebel because we need to be able to choose. We cannot uh, have people uh, being forced to choose between work and health. This is really a shame. So, Michele Tiraboschi, now uh, your task will be to guide us towards the conclusion of this dialogue to uh, open a new one. Good evening, and thank you for inviting me here. This is, of course, a challenge. The speeches that we've heard so far and uh, I see uh, many familiar faces among the audience. So uh, all this uh, knowledge, all this experience help us as researchers to look at things in a different way. I appreciated Enrico's speech when he talked about his uh, idea to do something from an operational point of view. As Alejandro said, we don't need a law, we need uh, passion, desire to make a difference uh, within uh, your community. But laws can represent an obstacle, can create an obstacle or offer opportunities. And uh, Stefano, you said that you invited me to reflect over a special experience. You said one of the tools at our disposal is the role of social cooperatives in helping companies fulfill the legal obligations when it comes to recruiting uh, disabled people. Uh, moving from this uh, obligation, this need to satisfy a legal obligation, and we know that many companies don't do it, since uh, the last uh, report that dates 2018, 30% of companies were not uh, satisfying the requirements for this. And one company out of two uh, recruits uh, people with disability, but not enough. And uh, the change is to move from this idea of satisfying our legal obligations to considering it an opportunity. And um, we talk about uh, disability, different abilities. But I like very much the title of this uh, meeting, A Decent Job for a Good Life. There's no reference to uh, n what is normal and what is not, because the problem of a decent job for a good life is a problem that we all have. And this small rule that is Article 14 in the Biagi law, which is the implementation decree of 2003, is interesting, not because we recently rediscovered it, as a matter of fact, during the pandemic, uh, the people in charge of recruitment said everything stopped. You were no longer obliged to um, hire people with disability, but there was an increase in the number of people uh, with disability being recruited. And I was really surprised. Of course, these are not huge figures. Even though this uh, law was uh, highly criticized, strongly criticized, Article 14 was the uh, object of strong critics because they said you want to uh, separate uh, the disabled worker. Uh, they they said that uh, uh, this article uh, created a selection of companies into first league companies and second league companies. But if we look at the real situation, um, 
what Rico was saying, his desire to do something practical, is what Article 14 wanted to do. 30% of quotas is not uh, met. So these people have no opportunities and are left alone. We heard uh, about uh, relationship experiences. We should be able to look at the real situation. Then, okay, we, we like to talk about rights. But at the same time, we need someone who's passionate enough to take these rights and put them into practice. And that means uh, offer an opportunity, offering opportunity. As I said, figures are very small. Many regions did not implement the law. So, and even though the law is still in force, uh, it's been now kind of neglected. In many regions, uh, some, re some provinces uh, uh, adopt it, others don't. In last November in Milan, we talked about this issue. Milan has 90 agreements, about 300, 400 people totally. In Varese, they doubled the number of agreements that they reached an agreement by which a company uh, requires uh, social cooperatives to perform an activity, and this cooperative will hire a disabled person to perform that activity. In Veneto, there is a more recent uh, law. So the Biaggi law dates back to 2003. It was implemented in 2005. In 2005, there was five agreements following Article 14. Obviously, the law tries to uh, spread this uh, positive experience. So at first, there were just five agreements, but in 2021, we're talking about 150, a bit more than 150 agreements for less than 400 uh, workers uh, placed in a job. So not much, but still, it's an important tool because it's a practical tool. And it's also important because it tries to um, answer to this desire to do something practical to guarantee a decent job in a way that is not theoretical but very much uh, rooted in the local community. When I uh, participate in this kind of debates, I, I have the impression that, okay, we can talk about it, but it's in any case something different from standard work, from standard jobs. As a matter of fact, uh, people with disability are uh, placed uh, by a specific kind of office, a bit like it happens with uh, pedag pedagogic activity. If you have learning problems, uh, there is a special office devoted to it. But we are all special. We all have different abilities. And this is the real revolution. The pandemic, uh, this kind of smart way of working, have highlighted the fact that uh, we no longer have a, a workplace. So we go a bit uh, beyond uh, the standard idea of something normal with standard working hours. I, I go on the market and hire people that have the right strength to be able to perform a certain job for a certain amount of hours. But today, we are in the right conditions to be able to rethink 
uh, the relationship that we have with work. Because um, everyone has his or her own vulnerabilities. Just think of people with chronic pathologies. And now we work long for longer, so chronic pathologies affect most of the workers. And I'm not talking about uh, just uh, very serious pathologies, but other pathologies that limit your ability to perform a job. So these uh, businessmen that uh, he was referring to are able to see what that person has to offer. So they don't force anyone to do anything, but they ask the person, what would you like to do? And this should apply to any worker, not just workers with disability. So each person should be placed uh, in the condition to contribute with what he or she has to uh, offer. With new technologies, a lot of things can be done remotely, for example. And this is something very important to consider. So I think we should go beyond uh, uh, this kind of uh, specific job placement. Many countries are following this uh, um, idea. So as uh, Stefano was saying, we need to work uh, still to um, help our uh, society to um, evolve from this point of view. But I like the idea of creating a kind of common container, not to uh, do a research about what the law says, but to share uh, each one's experience. Some are successful, others maybe not. But this is um, uh, something that we should share because we feel this desire to do something practically. And so this could be a starting point by sharing our own experience. For example, the manager of the Varese office doesn't know what's happening in Mantova, for example. So it's very important to have a dialogue, to have communication. We need to share these good uh, practices. So rather than do a standard theoretical research, uh, an academic research, um, well, the Calipolo Foundation did a good kind of research recently, but uh, do something different. Listen to the people who uh, live in an area, understand whether they know about this law or they don't, whether this uh, rule is implemented or not, and maybe then you can uh, offer some proposals to improve uh, the situation, to modify some parts through cooperation. So this is possible. On the one hand, we need to, as I said, share this, all this experience. And again, not simply referred to people with disability, but also with reference to social entrepreneurs, because they should not feel they are alone. It's very important that they share what they experience and all the positive and negative elements of them, all the efforts that were made. And the results, even small, are important because uh, you're giving opportunities to people who otherwise wouldn't have any. And, and also the people in charge of industrial relations and trade unions should reconsider the standard set of rules of labor law. And I'm not talking about flexibility and provisional work and so on. 
because work is part of our life. Life, uh, sorry, a job is decent, not only based on the kind of contract or labor agreement that they have, but uh, um, based on whether it allows the person who performs it to feel happy and satisfied with what uh, he or she does. So we must go beyond our standard idea of what is work with the separation between public work and private work. And the idea of a third sector per se, and many sociologists have been talking about this, when they talk about going beyond the paradigm, this is what they mean. And that's why it is so important to create locally uh, relations because large companies cannot do much if they don't have those who are rooted in a certain area and keep people in valleys and plains uh, so that they don't run away because they don't have enough services there maybe. So it's a system-based logic. It's a competition between areas, systems, and this is a source of wealth that cooperation can provide. So I not only satisfy the um, obligations that I have in terms of hiring and recruitment, but I do something more. In the province of Varese, these agreements, uh, according to Article 14, have been uh, reached to, for example, uh, work on the green areas or to uh, mend uh, cycling paths so that uh, we can create a community that creates value and wealth for the whole uh, area. So, of course, after 20 years, we need uh, to analyze uh, the, the law and uh, uh, draw some conclusions. Uh, for example, the Treu law uh, has just celebrated 25 years of existence, but nobody uh, even realized it. And uh, for example, if a law is not designed for people, created for people, uh, it will not um, succeed. And we have to remember that cooperation is an essential point because work is a resource that needs to be shared. Thank you. Thank you, Michele Tiraboschi. I would have liked to have a second round, but as you can clearly understand, this is not possible. Please allow me to make two final remarks. First of all, um, going back to what Michele just said, he said we were taught that it's always it always goes back to knowledge. So we are not interested in a research just for academic purposes. But in order to get to know, you need to look at reality. Otherwise, we create our own reality. And maybe that is not in line with the real situation. And uh, a common denominator of all speeches was the fact that uh, the enterprise is linked to the ego, to the identity of the person. So the two young workers who spoke in the video were telling about their own enterprise. And that was clear. And thirdly, work is a social issue. It's not an individual issue alone. It's also a social issue. And so it, ha it depends on relationship, on the environment, and uh, when we think about alliances, an alliance allows us to go beyond uh, 
the differences, the divergences, profit and non-profit, cooperation. So I would like to thank all our guests, all our friends here. We will try and uh, continue this uh, debate. Compagnia delle Opere Sociali surely uh, during ne next year will uh, continue uh, to work on these topics. And I hope we will be able to go along this path together. Uh, Eleonora um, said something that made me smile. She said, we're not interested in these things just for cultural reasons. We are interested for very practical reasons. And uh, this meeting here clearly shows that the real culture and uh, what is practical go hand in hand in most cases. So I would like to remind you that uh, this meeting, which is a third sector um, institution, requires resources. Many of these resources are linked, uh, provided by sponsors. Many are linked to the work of volunteers. This is something that really impresses people when they arrive here. But each one of us can play his or her role simply uh, donating a small amount. You will see uh, in, uh, in this building uh, some areas with a red uh, heart. And uh, if you want, you can give your own contribution. So thank you very much and enjoy your dinner. See you next time. Civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Sosteniamo le donne e gli uomini impegnati nello sviluppo delle imprese e delle attività professionali per affrontare le sfide imprenditoriali, sociali e culturali del nostro tempo, contribuendo al bene comune. Compagnia delle opere, un criterio ideale, un'amicizia operativa. Sosteniamo le donne e gli uomini impegnati nello sviluppo delle imprese e delle attività professionali per affrontare le sfide imprenditoriali, sociali e culturali del nostro tempo, contribuendo al bene comune. Compagnia delle opere, un criterio ideale, un'amicizia operativa. Sosteniamo le donne e gli uomini impegnati nello sviluppo delle imprese e delle attività professionali per affrontare le sfide imprenditoriali, sociali e culturali del nostro tempo, contribuendo al bene comune. Compagnia delle opere, un criterio ideale, un'amicizia operativa.